Hey, it's Mike here, and today, lion's mane mushrooms for brain health. In particular, we're going to investigate some claims that have been floating around that it reverses Alzheimer's severity, which is quite a tall order. So we're going to be looking at a bunch of research on the compounds in these mushrooms, their effects through various research studies, and different brain compounds that are super important here. And while there are some solid connections to be made here, we definitely need to be managing expectations. You know, I have a family history of Alzheimer's, and I imagine a lot of people People who are struggling, you know, with somebody with Alzheimer's, getting their hopes up really, really high that it's just going to cure people. You know, we gotta be careful about stuff like that. But that being said, I love mushrooms and I'm really excited about all of this mushroom research. So let's get right into it. One of the more credible claims of Alzheimer's reversal that I found is really just anecdotally from this Dr. Kevin Spellman. Here are his credentials in case you wanna pause to read them, but here's his claim. The other side of that is I started diving more and more into the research, I started talking to people um, in the mushroom industry and people that sell mushrooms as well. And almost everyone I talked to had a story about somebody being in Alzheimer's disease and putting them on lion's mane and them coming out of the Alzheimer's disease enough to at least be functional, if not even better than that. The interviewer alludes to him reading all of the scientific studies on lion's mane, and he's not outright saying that it does. He's just really implying that there could be some major hope here. But let's get into the basics of lion's mane because a lot of people aren't that familiar with this pretty cool sort of dangly looking mushroom. It's also known as Hericium arenaceus, and it generally feeds off of sort of dead woody matter like a lot of other mushrooms do. Well, it is native to Europe, North America, and Asia. It has what appears to be the longest known history with Chinese medicine where it is used to improve cognitive function. However, like I've said before, pangolin scales, which are basically fingernails, are used for male sexual function as a treatment, so we gotta look closely here. And I will say, I have bought them in the past and I thought that they tasted really good. It was sort of like an artisanal farmer's market situation. I don't really see them around that much, but hopefully that will change. And let's get to the compounds that are actually in it that could be making the difference here, actually helping out the brain. And that brings us to some hard to pronounce unfamiliar stuff, starting with hericinones or hericinones. I've heard it pronounced both ways. These mimic growth factors, which we'll get into in a little bit. And then we also have arenosines. They allegedly also stimulate those growth factors and then decrease cell death or that apoptosis that you may be familiar with. And in case you're wondering, yes, both of these can cross the blood brain barrier. And that's really important when you're establishing biological plausibility. Can this actually get where it needs to go to do what it needs to do? Apparently, yes. And the connections for those compounds will be highlighted in the studies that we're about to cover. I just wanted to give you a quick preview. And to know more about what's going on, we need to look at the brain compounds that are actually acting here. And the first one is nerve growth factor. Of course, neurons are nerve cells, so you want your growth factors to be working. And from this study, they are a family of proteins responsible for maintenance, survival, and regeneration of neurons during adult life. And one often cited paper actually claims that these lion's mane compounds can stimulate nerve growth better than nerve growth factor itself, but here is that paper, which appears to be retracted and looking at the notes on why it was retracted, it actually says for not disclosing conflicts of interest and that there's some sort of suspiciously repetitive data. The researchers though claim that it is legit. However, that might not matter that much because that was a Petri dish study and this other Petri dish study found that one of those hericinones actually strongly increased the nerve growth factor production. So whether these compounds are mimicking it or increasing nerve growth factor itself, clearly there is a potential effect there. And next we have this study that does echo it. Yes, lion's mane does appear to increase that nerve growth factor in human cells. And it is also an animal study. You know, I'm really not fond of those, but I have to share the results. Mice given a 5% dried lion's mane powder for seven days did show an increase in the nerve growth factor gene expression in their hippocampus. So now we're going from Petri dish to actually in the animal, something happening. But then that raises the question, do we have human studies that actually measure nerve growth factor levels, which apparently you can do with a simple blood test. However, I'm not sure if it would really reflect what's going on inside the brain that well. 
I didn't see anything on it. All right, now we're gonna take a quick break and have one little holiday season tip with our sponsor, Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. A symbiotic is a probiotic with a prebiotic that feeds those hungry probiotic good bacteria. In that case, we're talking about 53.6 billion active cell units within the, these little guys here. It's also masterfully coated so it can make it down into your digestive system where it's 24 strains can do their work, which is backed by science in terms of supporting digestive health, gut immunity, gut barrier integrity, skin health, cardiovascular health, and micronutrient synthesis. And today we have a holiday season gut tip, which is more of a reminder, which is to increase your dietary fiber and really keep your dietary fiber up in the face of all those processed foods, which will inevitably be in front of your face during the holiday season. And really just focus on eating a diversity of plants. The American Gut Project found that those who ate 30 or more different types of plants a week had better gut diversity, which is amazing. And I've actually been putting spinach in my oatmeal in the morning because Lindy's like, that sounds healthy and I do what she says. And she is also super motivated to keep taking seed because of her experience with it that I've talked about several times. Anyway, if you wanna give it a try, you can click the link below and use seeds limited time 25% off discount with Mike25 at checkout. It's normally 15%. And if you're past that limited time, there will be information below for you to at least get the 15%. All right, it's time to seed it up. But make sure you have water first, back to the show. <laughs> and now for another one of these brain compounds that appears to go up with lion's mane, and that is one that's important for brain plasticity, BDNF. No, it is not a railroad company. It is brain-derived neurotrophic factor, mouthful. <laughs> From this study, quote, BDNF is fundamental for learning and long-term memory in the central nervous system. And also from this study, reduced expression of BDNF has a crucial role in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease. So this is super relevant. And as the above Petri dishes found, yes, that BDNF is also increasing in levels in a Petri dish only as lion's mane is administered. I once again looked to see if there were any human trials that were actually looking at levels of this. And it turns out we do have one which also has other important findings that are worth knowing about. And it is this trial on obese individuals looking at depression and anxiety and sleep. Well, they were not able to get a rise in BDNF levels. They did get a rise in pro-BDNF, which is its precursor. So that could have a benefit to some degree, who knows? But perhaps most importantly, this study was a success. Although it wasn't huge, they did find a decrease in anxiety and depression levels from baseline and compared to controls as these charts show, which is awesome. Now maybe it was these lion's mane compounds acting directly on the brain and growth factors and all of that, but it's also possible that because mushrooms are often anti-inflammatory, this could have just used another pathway to get those results, which is why we need more studies that are larger and bigger and looking at more blood markers. Let's move on. Now, what about actual cognitive behavior? Behaviors. We do have some human data, but before we get to it, I'm sorry, we have to do another mousy one. This one found that two months of lion's mane extract reversed their age decline of recognition memory, which is quite interesting. And also the insane finding of new neuron creation in the hippocampus and cerebellum of these mice. And this is where we have to have some caveats because no humans don't make new neurons as readily as mice. However, from this NIH write-up, we do continue to make new neurons in our hippocampus into older age. And another point, just looking at Alzheimer's research in rodents, generally when we're talking about drugs, only 1% of it is actually applicable to humans when they try to reproduce it. So just keep that in mind with all these mouse findings. And for those that aren't aware, the hippocampus plays a role, large role in learning and memory. And it is one of those areas that declines in function for Alzheimer's. But we can imagine that if you can increase the function of it, theoretically, you can improve someone's state of Alzheimer's. You may have heard me talk about Alzheimer's as clogged brain arteries. I have a whole video on it. You know, Alzheimer's original research in the early 1900s mentions vascular changes. That is huge. And then of course we have the beta amyloid, which seats itself in that plaque and can cause more oxidation and damage from there. And that's a huge key factor of Alzheimer's. Which brings me to another mouse study, but the findings, again, have to be shared. We have you know, multiple methods of administering lion's mane, and the results are generally about 35% reduction in beta amyloid plaques. They also found less behavioral deficits, which they 
put as more normalized nesting behaviors. I can just imagine a little mouse grandma forgetting where her bed sheets are and then, and then maybe remembering with lion's mane. Oh wait, though, no, sadly, these guys were killed at like six months old, so they weren't grandmas. But looking around the literature at some human-related data, which wasn't lion's mane related, that could be really relevant here is this study on giving people with Alzheimer's nerve growth factor directly, and quote, results showed that after treatment lasting for 12 months, patients had improvements in cognitive function and lower levels of amyloid beta in their cerebral spinal fluid. And this is super interesting because if we find that lion's mane is increasing nerve growth factor, perhaps we could reference that study in terms of the effect that we might get down the line for somebody with Alzheimer's, just an estimate. But going back to Dr. Kevin Spellman, he actually doesn't view beta amyloid plaques as the sort of main feature here and believes that it's actually these tau tangles that play a larger role. And for some background, these tau proteins are stabilizing proteins in your brain and from alzheimer's.org. These abnormal forms of tau protein cling to the other tau proteins inside the neuron and form tau tangles. Interesting stuff, here he is. Uh, you also, rather excitingly, because there was a p study just published suggesting that uh, barking up the amyloid plaque hypothesis is the wrong direction to go, and I think there's been enough data around to really say that for at least eight years now. Um, nonetheless, people are still stuck on the amyloid story, but th the tau tangles also tend to be very significant, and a very recent study, uh, I think perhaps published in Nature, suggests that uh, that might be more of an etiological factor than the amyloid uh, plaque. Some of the heresinones tend to have activity in terms of reducing tau tangles. So that's also some interesting activity there. From the study, they're also known as neurofibrillary tangles or NFTs, which are also responsible for Alzheimer's disease progression. I knew those NFTs were crashing for a reason. <laughs> And while I didn't see a ton of data on tau tangles and lion's mane mushrooms, it's possible that the lower cell death from these compounds in lion's mane could you know, lead to less of these tangled up cells later on. I'm sure there's a lot going on there, but now let's get to some actual real human data that looked at cognitive impairment. It's a randomized control trial here, but it's not on a ton of people, sadly. It's 30 people that were split into two groups of 15. Now we're talking a randomized control trial of Japanese people between 50 and 80 with mild cognitive impairment, so they weren't even diagnosed with Alzheimer's, apparently. Now they used a dementia scoring scale, which tops out at 30 as the highest score. And then they gave about 3000 milligrams of this mushroom powder to people a day. And here's a chart where it gets really interesting. We have their score over many weeks in the control group with the placebo pill stayed almost flat. They went up a little bit, but not super noticeable. However, the lion's mane group here saw a very noticeable improvement and very compellingly their scores then dropped after they stopped taking it. Kabloom. One of the participants actually reached the max score of 30 to the point where I guess they didn't have cognitive impairment anymore. And then we have to ask, is this actually a result of those compounds changing brain chemistry? Or could it again be the anti-inflammatory properties? Uh, it's probably not placebo because we had a placebo group, but we also need a larger trial to confirm this. Always need more larger trials. It's, I'm gonna get a tattoo that says that. I would love to see more clinical research. And that's where, that's where the weakness is right now. But beyond Alzheimer's, you might be thinking, hey, if this is something that can actually be growing nerves, wouldn't there be other applications? And yeah, there's hope for this in the area of people with neuropathy or other nerve damage. And this is just one type of mushroom. Clearly there are other good compounds in other mushrooms. Here's one that looked at lion's mane and also reishi mushrooms. And you can see these neurons actually growing effectively once exposed to reishi, you know, those little tails on the nerve cells. So that's pretty cool stuff. It doesn't stop at lion's mane. So in the end, we have a lot of interesting findings, but we still have that big gap between what has been demonstrated in petri dishes and so on versus in humans. In humans, again, we got 15 people who saw some improvements. It was a small trial. And then we also have all of the mechanistic studies which are pointing to lion's mane having the ability to increase nerve growth factor in an actual human. And then the BDNF, pro-BDNF stuff is a little unclear in humans. And lion's mane could also be helping prevent brain cell death as well as 
perhaps growing some new cells in the hippocampus. That would be awesome to somehow see proven one day, but we need a lot more funding into this and we need a lot more research done by people who aren't in the industry. Hopefully that would happen. You know, maybe if the NIH could do a large study. If I had to design it, at least 150 people with Alzheimer's in a control group, another 150 in that line's main group, and then be tracking as many different markers and cognitive function tests as they can. So it's still possible that it could reverse Alzheimer's. I would not say that it does reverse Alzheimer's. You know, those anecdotes that, uh, that Dr. Spellman had are interesting and I would love to see them proven. But again, you know, I've witnessed Alzheimer's firsthand. And I feel really bad for anybody that's dealing with it right now. So I hope that we can have a real solution come out of this and not just get our hopes up. Either way, mushrooms are awesome. And what else is awesome is Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. So again, you can get that 25% off your first month's order by clicking the link below and using Mike25 at checkout. And again, if it's past a limited time, you can still get 15% off. That is all. Feel free to like and subscribe, share. Let me know down below what you think about all of this and have a nice one. See you later.